If you love keikis, then welcome to this video. I appreciate you clicking on it. Thank you so, so much. My hope is that you will not get sick of keikis after watching this video because there are a lot of them here at different stages of progress, which include a visual update on some that featured in previous videos. And we have a lot of ground to cover, including a comprehensive Q&A, how to get keikis to grow before harvesting, and when the best timing is to harvest them, what to watch out for as well as how to pot them up or mount them and care for them so that they will continue to thrive once they've been removed from the mother plant. Now oftentimes we see keikis as a blessing but we have to know the orchid in question to understand when keikis are a threat because there are situations when an orchid will produce keikis because the mother plant is on the way out of this world or possibly maybe on the way out of this world and keikis are a signal to us that there is something not quite right with the orchid. Even if the orchid is growing well, keikis can signal that the orchid is experiencing some form of stress. So stress influences can be recent repots, root loss in general, or even the recent arrival of an orchid into your environment after shipping. Everything that is out of the norm can cause a form of stress and with that an orchid inclined to produce keikis will do so. This is not the case with Dendrobium aphyllum or Phalaenopsis pulchra, just some examples. These orchids just like to grow keikis regardless. Personally, I don't mind, but what to do with all these little babies our orchids are giving us? Well, in the case of my Dendrobium aphyllum, I have created a monster mount on which I have been pinning keikis since 2020. The mount looks a little mangy while we wait for the keikis to mature their year-on-year -year new growth, but the idea being to one day have a curtain effect with a sensational bloom show. Or, in the case of my pulchra, I potted the first keiki up and it is doing great. My berry odor, however, declined the past two years, wasn't a keiki machine, but it declined to the point that I decimated her recently, kept all the viable canes that could perhaps produce keikis, and well, here is the update on those canes. Here is a keiki that is clearly ready for its own pot or mount. It has leafed out, has long enough roots, it is ready to be all independent and such. Many of the older canes that I saved have started to grow more keikis of their own, despite being without keikis when I potted the canes up. And here are some examples of those new keikis that are not viable to be harvested yet. You want to have the keiki completely leafed out, as in the previous example. These little ones are far too immature to grow well on their own. However, if the cane on which a keiki is growing is depleting faster than the keiki has time to mature and leaf out, then getting the keiki off and attempting to get it to grow on, have roots get access to water more consistently, is highly recommended. And just another update, here are the spike keiki hybrids, which produced roots, but in 2023 did not develop a node at the base, even while still attached on the mother plant. Well, fast forward to 2024, and what do you know? Spike keiki hybrid with new growth at the base. I can't say that I'm not happy about that. <laughs> Now, know that as long as a mature keiki is attached to the mother plant, the roots will not absorb water. While the keiki is drawing from the mother plant, the roots do not need to absorb water. So know that a newly harvested keiki will repel water for at least two days before the roots take up water. If you're planning to mount the keiki, then you can do that straight away and provide the roots with a water retentive media around them straight away so as to encourage the roots to take up water as soon as possible. If you plan to pot your keiki up, then I highly recommend that you keep the roots submerged in water for a day, let them dry out and repeat until they start to green up before potting the keiki up. You don't have to do this, but it gives you peace of mind that your keiki is in actual fact absorbing water once potted up. It takes the guessing game away, which is super helpful when it comes to peace of mind. Then, no matter what the conditions the mother plant can tolerate, high light, temperature range from maximum to minimum, treat your keiki to 50% less of those conditions because once a keiki is removed from the mother plant, its history is that of a keiki, but now it becomes a seedling. 
So, high humidity, less light and intermediate to warm temperatures with reduced fertilizer levels, seedlings need those steady conditions, and only after the seedling then matures over the years can you expose it to the conditions a mature orchid can tolerate and prefers. It can take several years for a keiki to become a blooming size orchid again. Some, of course, are more vigorous than others, but just keep in mind that new growths from the keiki will possibly not match the size of the growths on the mother plant until several years later. As an example, here's the class of 2019 of my Dendrobium aphyllum next to the mother plant, and the canes of 2024 are still nowhere near the size of the canes of the mother plant. As you saw in the previous footage, I twisted off keikis from canes because I have excellent roots that will take up water in a couple of days. However, when it comes to my Dendrobium aphyllum keikis, I'm going to explain why I chose to cut the length of the cane. They are attached to off. So here is my aphyllum mother plant and I have to tell you it has been another year of excellent keiki growth. As mentioned, the aphyllum will grow keiki regardless. It's in her DNA, but in order to encourage more keikis, if that is what you want, I missed the bare canes with seaweed and cow mag, a very dilute concentration of no more than 50 parts per million combined, because I always hope that as many nodes of the canes that are designated for keiki growth will actually grow keikis. So the misting starts after the orchid has finished blooming, and the canes are completely bare. I continue with this until I see the nubbins on the move. Once I see the nubbins emerging, I stop with the misting and don't bother doing anything until the roots are approximately two inches long, because I do not want to rot out any of the tender growths in and around the nubbins that are just developing. Once the roots are long enough, that is when I keep them nicely misted because of the severe dry climate that I am growing my orchids in. Where the keikis are more protected, the root growth is sensational but the more exposed to the elements, those keikis and keeping their roots growing becomes a challenge. Still, all this misting over several months and none of these roots ever took up water. And they've had exposure to a lot of it. I'm just trying to show you what you're up against when you are trying to take care of a keiki before it removes the mother plant. If your roots do not take up water, that is normal. You do not apply more. If you're in a climate that has high humidity, you probably won't need to mist them as much as I do to keep them growing actively. Now in the past years I harvested all the keikis this mother plant grew, but I'm going to talk you through what my plans are for the class of 2024, because I want to encourage a bloom show that fills in the blanks in the future. So I'm leaving keikis on the orchid that are higher up like these. The older canes stop here, the new canes may or may not be long enough to fill in the blank, so these keikis are staying to hopefully one day bloom and fill in that gap. Same situation with these. The newer canes may just end where these keikis start, and for that reason I'm leaving them attached to extend the bloom show even further down the orchid. There are also some keikis tucked in behind these new growths, they are staying on as well. So what I am left with to harvest for 2024 and pin on my monster mount, these three down here. That is all I am removing. And then we shall see if the keikis have a chance to bloom on two or three spikes and what that will look like in the spring of 2025 when it comes to filling in the blanks and having a wonderful solid bank of blooms. And in removing these keikis, I'm cutting the length of the cane off with the keikis attached. While I could twist them off, I am hoping that I'm going to make my life a lot easier to pin them to the mount by using the cane as the structure where I can tie them off. I'm going to try and keep those long roots intact for as long as possible. And if I twisted these keikis off, it is not easy to pin them securely and firmly on the mount just using the neck of the keiki. Also, leaving part of the cane with the keikis allows them to draw energy from the cane while they are in the transition phase of suddenly being mounted. So let's get these three into their allocated space on the monster mount and answer your questions.
Susie Cutie. Well, I call her that because it's so fitting. Susie asked, is there any way to encourage the mother plant to make cakeys instead of a flower spike? And the answer to that, it depends on the orchid. But yes, for the most part, if you stress your orchids out to such a degree that they are on the verge of collapse or feel threatened that they are on their way over the rainbow bridge, then some orchids will grow cakeys when they normally would not. This applies to dendrobiums and fowls, and from what I have noticed over the years, I have not seen it on any other orchids in the Cattleya Alliance, so I would shy away from pushing those to their limits in the hopes that they will produce cakeys. It is possible possible to encourage cakeys when using a product called cakey paste as well, which is a gel kind of consistency packed full of growth hormones. I tried it many years ago before I had my channel and was not successful. In order to stress an orchid that is a candidate for growing cakeys as part of their DNA, you can stop fertilizing for example. Water sparingly to the point that you see shriveling structures. Keep a flower spike on a fowl with all the nodes viable still on the plant and if you want to encourage the nodes not using cakey paste, then remove the protective tissue around the node to expose what is underneath to more light. Denise asked about the size of the mount or pot when it comes to potting cakeys up. So, when it comes to mounting cakeys, I would advise to use a mount that will accommodate the orchid once mature. It will look a little bit over the top for a few years until the cakeys produce their new growth and the size of the orchid starts to match the size of the mount. But to mount cakeys on a small mount to coincide with the size of the cakeys proportions and then they grow to a size within two years, you will have to remove the now settled in cakeys to a large amount which may affect the progress for another two years until the orchid gets established again. But when it comes to potting up, the reverse is true because you can match the size of the pot to the size of the cakey and when they have established themselves, it's an easy up pot without disturbing the root system too much. Because once again, when it comes to potting up cakeys, they are seedlings, so we don't want to overdo it. We don't want a pot size that will match the size of the orchid once the cakeys mature and become the size of the mother plant. So Laura's question is all about how you treat a mother plant that forms a cakey. So when a cakey forms on a stressed mother plant, it is advisable to try and keep that cakey on the mother plant until there are some established roots on the cakey itself. I consider established roots being at least 10 centimeters long when it comes to Phalaenopsis orchids, which was the genus in question here, and that would be approximately three inches. I would prefer to advise to try and keep the cakey on for longer so that the roots can grow longer, but sometimes needs must and we need to intervene. With 10 centimeter roots, you will have the higher chance of the roots actually being able to take up water within a week. And I apologize if I'm repeating myself, but I'm going to say it again because it is important. Once a cakey is removed from the mother plant, it was a cakey as part of its history, but now it is a seedling and the care should be in accordance with the needs of the orchids in question as per seedling care. Orchid Ninja Samurai Nina Sun removed a flower spike that produced roots. Ahem. Did you see mine previously? So I have had several examples of flower spikes with roots, like a cakey hybrid for the most part. They did not grow a new growth at the base, but this year, because the orchid in question was so stressed and needed taking apart, even a spike hybrid cakey did produce a basal growth. Which is a reminder to Susie's question. The more stressed the orchid is, the more likely cakeys will grow in order to fight for the survival of the orchid's kind. So if this happens to another flower spike Nina Sun, leave it on the mother plant and and then see if in another seasonal growth cycle, a new growth won't actually grow at the base. Also, yes, cakeys can be really fussy. They will look fantastic on the mother plant, but the moment they are removed, the root tips can stop growing, the roots are still hydrophobic, etc., etc. Typical seedling behavior. They need high humidity, consistent access to water, or at least they should not be left to dry out because we need the roots to start absorbing water as soon as possible. And the best time to remove a cake is when it is as mature and as fully grown as possible and then still treat it like a seedling. Woo Woo One had a great question as well, which I want to briefly address. No matter where you are in the world, cakeys usually start appearing late spring. Now, it is a matter of choice if you want to remove cakeys from a mother plant or just let it be. And I showed you an example why I'm leaving some Dendrobium Ophilum cakeys on the mother plant in the hopes to fill in some blanks and get a more spectacular 
solid bloom show. If removing cakeys is part of the plan, then it is advisable for the roots of the cakeys to be long enough to eventually start absorbing water on their own. And keep in mind, be patient. Once the cakeys are removed, the roots change their behavior because they are the only way for the cakey to survive and it will only take a couple of days for them to absorb water. So I hope I got all the questions from my community post included in this video. If you have any further questions, the comments are there for a reason. And you know what? They also have a like a share and a subscribe button underneath the video they are there for a reason as well they help the video get into the algorithm they help support the video the channel and inadvertently it helps me thank you so much for liking the video and sharing it possibly and subscribing that would be great i appreciate the support so so much thank you so let's just go back to a Phalaenopsis example, and this is the species Phalaenopsis pulchra. While it is fun to get keikis and grow them on separately, it's not necessary to do so if the mother plant is healthy. If the mother plant is struggling though, and you don't want the mother plant to exhaust herself, then yes, that is when keikis have to be removed or else the mother plant will collapse. Nature tells the mother plant she has had enough babies to save her kind, and with that, she won't pull through for lack of another way of saying it. And here are some other questions I have seen over the years that I briefly want to touch on. Do healthy orchids grow keikis? Yes, they do. While in private cultivation, we will see stressed orchids produce keikis more often, some species are inclined to grow keikis as part of their natural growth habit, classic example being the Dendrobium of Phylum, which I am dealing with. This orchid, for example, does not bloom along the entire length of the cane. Instead, it reserves the lower nodes for keikis, even though the orchid is healthy, which is awesome. If you were to have this orchid in a hybrid, for example, the characteristics of growing keikis may be passed on to the hybrid. We just need to understand the difference between why an orchid grows keikis and when it is because the orchid is threatened or the orchid just has keiki growth in its DNA. I also have keikis for the first time on a healthy nobly variety Cooksonianum. And the orchid is healthy, and that was also before the Great Burn. So another question is, is there a way to stop keikis from growing? Yes, <laughs> you just have to wait a little bit, because once your orchid is out of its stress phase, it should stop with the keiki growth. Growing a healthy root system and giving the required care all eliminates stress, which will stop keiki growth after maybe one, sometimes two seasons. However, keep in mind which orchid you have once again. Some are just prolific keiki growers, even while healthy. And how long does it take for keikis to grow? They will grow at the same pace the mother plant does. However, they are seedlings after having been removed from the mother plant. So to get them to mature size as per the mother plant, that can take several years, depending on which orchid we are talking about. And where should you be on the lookout for keikis? Possible keikis? Usually along the non-flowering nodes of a dendrobium cane. Some grow on the apex of a cane or most commonly at the viable nodes of Phalaenopsis flower spikes that are found below where the blooms previously were. I may have missed something, so please check the description for the past videos on keikis that I have on my channel. I have linked those for you to find easily. Despite repeating some of the information, because I don't know how people are taking advantage of the timestamps, I did want to make sure that I covered everything that was asked, as well as added a little bit in, when it came to information based on the observations I have made in the past years. If this video was helpful, and maybe you already knew everything that was included in this video either way, know that I appreciate your time watching if you've watched to the end. This also gives me the opportunity to wish you a fabulous day, but as per usual, I attach a condition to that, that you stay safe. Take care. Bye.